Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Redshift tutorial. Uh, in this little demo, I'm going to show you all of the cool little nodes that you have available to you on, uh, on Redshift. Uh, so for example, you have ambient occlusion, curvature, Fresnel, triplanar, uh, layer nodes, blender nodes, uh, color mix nodes, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to try to cover them all one by one and as quickly as possible. And uh, for the scene, all I have is basic HDRI image. I have this uh, floor set up and also have this model that I uh, modeled a couple days ago. And it's going to give you a nice uh, little view of uh, what each node is doing and uh, how to use each node in different scenarios. Anyway, so I already have a basic Redshift material applied here. Let me just delete this. And let's open this up. And as you can see, all I have is uh, the material node and the output node. Uh, so starting with the ambient occlusion, so let's type in AO. Ambient occlusion can be used uh, for giving you contact shadows. It can be used for masking different things. Uh, so let me show you what you can do here. So if I press Shift 1, uh, in my case, this is how I output the nodes to uh, the surface or the output node here. And as you can see, we're really getting a nice uh, contact shadows on our model. Uh, to play around with the options, we can turn on reflective. Uh, this is how you get all of your uh, metallic kind of looks. And let me just play around with the max distance as well. So we'll do 100 here. And yeah, that's, that's basically it for the ambient occlusion. And now to combine this, we can use color composite. And we're going to plug the ambient occlusion inside the base color of the color composite. And take the output back to the fuse color. And take the material, shift 1 and put it back to the output channel here, or the output node. Uh, so now what we have is ambient occlusion inside the composite, and it's trying to blend with the black color here. So for the base color, uh, we'll do maybe like a lighter blue. And now we're going to take the ambient occlusion and multiply it on top of that color. Uh, so what we're getting is uh, all of the contact shadows and uh, the blend color, which is this light blue. And just to show you the difference, if I zoom in here and unplug uh, this here, as you can see, we lose all of the shadows that we had, all of the contact shadows. And if I plug it back in, or actually to see this better, I'm going to keep it at white. And now plug this back in. And as you can see, uh, all of the contact shadows are back. Uh, but that's basically how to use uh, ambient occlusion, so it can be used uh, in many different cases. In my case, I showed you how to combine it uh, with a color node, and it can be combined with many different things, you know, noises, textures, and so on. Anyway, let's move on to the curvature node. Let's bring in curvature, and I do shift one. Uh, so you can, as you can see in the uh, output here, a curvature node basically has a couple different options. Anything that's uh, white will show up in the render when you blend it. Anything that's black will be hidden. So it can be used uh, for coloring. It can be used for masking. Same thing with ambient occlusion. Uh, so now we have a couple different options here. We have convex and concave. All it does, it flips the values here, as you can see. Uh, so for example, you want to blend two materials. And one is reflective and one is not reflective. Uh, let me just play around uh, with the radius here just a little bit. As you can see, it gets blurred and it gets really nice and sharp. Uh, so let's take this material, shift one, and we'll do base properties. We'll do like a blackish, uh, grayish color here. And we're going to make this rough. So we'll do 0.5. And we're really getting like a nice um, metallic look here. And now what we're going to do is take this material, duplicate it. And I was holding control and dragging. And for this material, we'll do the same color, but way lighter. So we'll do almost white or 80% gray. And now we'll drop the roughness to 0.1. And just to see what that looks like, uh, this is what we're getting uh, with this color here. And maybe it's a little bit too bright, so we can bring this down to 70. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And now let's blend these two materials using these uh, using this curvature node. Uh, so let's type in blend, and we have bump blender and material blender. 
So let's bring in Material Blender. Take the first color and bring it inside the color channel and take the second color and bring it inside the layer one input. And now if we plug this back in, uh, no changes will happen. Uh, but as you can see, if I take the blend color here and put it back to white, it will give me the second material. If I put it back to black, it will give me the first material. Uh, but what we're going to do is take this curvature node and instead of using the color, we're going to use the curvature node to blend these two. And as you can see, uh, we're getting a result between uh, the first material and the second material. And now if we want to play around with colors, for example, if this is too much for you, we can lower this down to 50%. And now as you can see, we're really getting a nice uh, little you know, difference in between uh, the two materials. Uh, so that's basically it for the curvature. It can be used to blend two materials. It can be used to blend uh, two colors, two bumps, and so on. Uh, let's move on to uh, triplanar. Uh, so first, let me bring in a texture node, and I will take all of these and just delete them, and I'll put our material uh, to the viewport. And let me just open a random uh, texture here. So let me go to textures, abstract waves, for example. I'll just bring this in. And we're going to output it to the viewport. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. Uh, we're getting a lot of seams, as you can see here. Uh, it doesn't really blend as good. And uh, this is where the triplanar node comes in. So we'll do triplanar. And now you take your texture node and plug it inside uh, texture X, Y, or Z. You can pick uh, whatever one works for you. And now we're going to output this. Well, let's first let's output it uh, to the viewport. So this is where we're getting. And in here, inside the triplanar, you can play around with the uh, blend amount uh, just to uh, blend these two uh, or all of the uh, textures together. Same thing for the curve, as you can see here. It's a really slight change, but you can kind of see how you can blend all of these together. Same thing for the offsets. You can play around and get a nice look depending on what you're going after. Uh, but this is basically how you take a non-seamless texture and you plug it in inside uh, your material. Uh, so now let's take this, for example, and we're going to use it for roughness. And we're going to take the material and output it uh, back uh, uh, to the viewport. As you can see, now we're getting all of these uh, changes on our on our model here. So some uh, spots are rough, some are not so rough, and and so on. Uh, but that's basically how to use the triplanar node. Uh, you can use any texture and you can project it back onto your model and uh, really have seamless results. Uh, anyway, let's move on uh, to basic uh, layer nodes. So we'll do layer and this node works the same way as the, the blend material node, but instead you can use uh, textures. So for example, if I bring in another texture node and I open the same little waves texture here, and I'm going to blend it for the base color, and I'm going to put it to diffuse. And uh, the reason we're getting black result here is because uh, layer one is activated and it's black. So now it's just pretty much asking for another texture node. So let's take another texture node, open that up, and let's go for something different here. Uh, no, not here, maybe. Yeah, one of these should work. So let's take one of these, and I'm gonna plug it back into layer one. And now we can blend uh, the waves texture and the uh, kind of like a punk looking texture together. And uh, oh, it just lagged out a little bit on me. But as you can see, uh, right now it's given us result uh, just for layer one. What we can do is take layer one and we can, for example, add it on top of the waves. Uh, we can multiply on top of the waves. And uh, so one, hopefully you get an idea. It's basically Photoshop and this is how you get creative and create really cool um, uh, you know, roughness maps and uh, color maps and so on. 
uh, but that's basically how to use uh, the color layer. And uh, let's see, for, uh, bump blending nodes, I can show you that as well real quick. So first you do basic bump map. Let's bring in the same little texture node, open that up. Well, let's take, I don't know, one of these doesn't really matter. Put inside uh, the input of the bump. Uh, take the bump, output it to the bump input of the material. And now uh, that thing is processing the texture. We'll see what we're going to get. So as you can see, uh, this is the bump that we're getting uh, with the first texture. So now what we can do is take this, bring in your bump blender node. And let's take another bump map multiply or copy the texture here and for this one we'll go back to now let's take this texture and put it back to uh, the second bump and now we're gonna take the first bump put inside the base of the bump blender and take the second bump and put it inside uh, the first uh, bump input basically layer one and now let's take this uh, blend and output it back to uh, the bump of the actual material. So now if you want to blend these two, as you can see, if you have blend weight, also you can use, uh, for example, uh, you know, the curvature node, you can use the ambient occlusion node and so on. But as you can see, you're basically blending in between two different bumps. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, that's basically it. So I've showed you the triplanar node, uh, ambient occlusion, curvature, uh, layer nodes, blending nodes, and uh, the color mixer nodes. Uh, hopefully you get an idea how to use all of these nodes and you can use them inside your workflow. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe, leave a like and uh, have a nice day guys. Uh, goodbye.